We're ready. Okay. The first thing I do whenever I want to applique is find the pattern that I like. And then I make my pattern, template it's called, and I cut it out of several boxes. Mostly it's cardboard, and I can use it time and time again. So I do the little, each little pattern I make, and I mark it on my fabric. And then I make interfacing, and I iron it on. I do it on with the glue on one side. Now you can get the one where it's got it on both sides, but I don't like that. I, if I'm doing little eyes or something that's just a little bitty thing, I'll use it. But most of the time I use this that is glue on one side. And the other side will stick to your material most of the time, and it don't move very much. So, and I like it because it's really, it don't, it's not stiff, and it won't, uh, uh, it moves. And, but if you've got a big piece, I mean a big piece like a, a, all the uh, t-shirt quilts, you want to get the more expensive interfacing because this will come loose after it pours. So then I cut out my first background material. And I cut out my um, batting and my bottom piece, the backing. I cut it a little bit bigger than this because you want, after I sew it on, then you trim it. But then I got each piece and I put it like I'm going to sew it. And I. Now all I gotta do is put a snap in the back and it's done. And I meant to ask my, my husband, he does that for me, and I meant to ask him if I got it. So I will put it on it before I give it to the hog grocery. But that is the way you make a baby feel applicant. Hand 
have today. Um, I, I tried to be very careful not to um, illegally, you know, take over her copyrights. Uh, they probably still could get me with this, but um, but I think I'm going to give you enough. That, okay, if you can't hear me, you tell me. Went to Walmart the other day, needed fabric to get these samples together. Don't usually shop Walmart for fabric. Whenever you get close, that thing gets close to something. You'll the book in front of it. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. Went to Walmart to buy fabric. Don't usually, but I was in a hurry. And came on the coolest thing. The Greenwood Walmart over by me on 135 has a huge new display of Waverly fabric cuts. That a yard for three bucks. And they are beautiful. And they are color coordinated. And they are just hanging on a wall. And I'm like, oh yeah, this is what I want. So I bought uh, I bought this and then I bought this. That's gonna go with it. And then I bought this. So I have twelve dollars in fabric. Um, until I finish what I've started, I can't tell you exactly how many blocks I'm going to get out of it, but I know I'm going to get at least a baby block. So uh, then you just buy more fabric if you want more blocks, just like anything. So that's just a little pitch for this because if you're not good at picking fabric, and I'm oftentimes not very good at picking fabric, this is your answer. So you start by cutting with the fabric, 44 inches, into two and a half inch strips. Uh, I then went into, after I bought my four, I just went into my stash and found some more scraps that I want to get rid of that kind of fit, just to add more variety to the quilt, because this, as you can see, these are pretty scrappy. So we all know how to cut two and a half inch strips. Um, my sister and Susan McKnight happened to own active cutter, well, active cutter machines, and you can cut two and a half inch strips in about 30 seconds. So if you come to the class I'm going to teach, I'm going to bring Sharon's active cutter. And so if anybody wants to bring their fabric, we literally can cut your strips. It is amazing. If you're not careful, you're welcome. That's what it is. So cut your strips. Then you take two strips and you sew them together. Now, if you look at the quilt on the left with the cream color, I sewed three strips together. Matter of fact, look at both of those. They're both three strips. But it makes no difference. It depends on the pattern you're using. Okay? So for this pattern, so two strips together. Then I'm taking my solid contrasting color. Well, I have two background colors in this pattern. Okay? One's yellow, one is floral. So I pick up a, a two strip and I put my, my contrasting on the back. So these are two and a half. That makes that what? Four and a half? Two and a half, two and a half. Five. That makes that one four and a half. Of course your pattern tells you. These are right sides together. Okay, so it's a, it's a two. That, that's the name, two strips quilting. It'll tell you how many for this particular pattern, how many to use coordinating fabric A on. How many you use coordinating fabric B on? Then you start. To, then you get to use the ruler. So you've got these strips, and you see the the pencil markings on there. Hopefully that's a trick shot, Ken. <laughs> you never know in my sewing room. Uh, yeah, there's the markings on. Okay. Again, using the pattern of your choice and your strip to ruler. There's inches down the side. This particular block calls for a five and a half inch. Because I I, uh, I do multiple things at one time and I don't think before I act or speak, I use painter tape because if you lay this up half an inch, down half an inch, you end up with different size blocks. So. That one on the left, I've probably got about 20 miscut blocks. 
So I'm putting them all together in another book. <laughs> so that's why for this demonstration, I finally thought, why don't I get a piece of painter's tape so I can see where I'm going. All right. All I'm going to do is, as, she, as she's showing on that yellow, I'm going to lay this on my table. I'm going to take this, and I'm going to find, here's my tube. And I'm going to lay my ruler on there to where my tape is. See what I'm doing? I'm laying that ruler right on there. Make sense? Tell me if it doesn't. And I'm rotary cutting up each side and down the other side of that. So I have a triangle. Then I'm going to flip my ruler over. I was going, it's hard to demonstrate. I was going this way with my ruler. The next one, I'll lay this one. So I'm not losing any fabric. Lay it right up to that. Then the next one, as she just showed you, flip my ruler over. Now I'm cutting as I go. You don't have to pre-mark these. I just marked them to show you the concept. So I'm just walking down this path, and out of one, the, the two on the end are going to be scrapped. So I have two, four, six, eight, ten blocks when I open them up and iron them. Half of them, I'm using, this is where I used the coordinating fabric one, here's where I use coordinating fabric two. A steam iron, uh, not steam iron, a hot iron is your friend, and spray starch is your friend. A steam iron you want to stay away from because we've got biased cuts, and you can get some wonky uh, designs if you're not careful. So, by now, I'm probably, literally, half hour into this process, you know, if you start with your, your strips cut, but there's nothing to sew those strips together and cut them. Then, your pattern, which I'll give you all these, will tell you how to make the block for the design you want, for the book you want to make. So this one, calls for, let's say, 20 of these. Very same block, it's just my coordinating fabric is laid out in a different spot. So now I got my block. And when you put your block together, there is the larger block. So, that's as far as I got with my pattern, but I'm assuming for a baby quilt, maybe two of these across and three or four down, maybe four crib quilt, three across. The point is you can make it as big as you want. I mean, obviously, you're just just sort of stripped together. I, I am not a color person. I don't see color like other women do, and so my quilts don't pop. I can already tell you right now that that yellow isn't bold enough to be. I like it. I think it's pretty, but I can just imagine how stunning this could be with different color choices. So if you're good at that, good for you. <coughs> All right, so. I think it's this is just ridiculous. So put, it, put it on my back. Turn it around. Okay. Well, then move it. So, I'm going to hand this out. We're going to go through them, and I hope I have enough. But, here's what this says. should have enough. It says the strip tube ruler is a great addition to your toolbox. You start by cutting two and a half inch strips. Now, let me take something else. I wanted to incorporate some of my scraps out of my sewing book. I want to use these polka dots. I didn't have with the fabrics. I just had scraps. Some of them back quarters, some of them were. I just sewed them together to make. So, I mean, you don't have to go out do it exactly like the pattern said. I just sewed them together, and where your seam is, you don't want that showing, you just position your ruler and skip it as you're cutting across. All right, so two and a half strips. We have a vendor back there with the jelly roll on sale for $30. You get, if I'm not mistaken, 40 two and a half inch strips in a jelly roll. That would be a beautiful way to start one of these books and then just buy a coordinating solid fabric. Um, spray starch is good. It gives you more precise cutting. 
it gives you more precise piecing because you are getting some bias, so stay away from skin. Uh, when you put those tubes together, those, the, the two right sides together, I, I'm not a pinner, I, I don't pin when I sew, but if you're not a pinner, be careful when you're sewing them that you don't get a gap or you don't get a cockeyed. You want it to lay flat. Um, as in all quilting, a consistent quarter inch seam is good. It can be, I don't care if it's a quarter inch, a scant quarter inch, but just make it the same. Because then, of course, you know. Um, so if you're doing a two strip, like I was, You'll take, you'll have two, two and a half, and then you'll have a four and a half to go on the back. But if you're doing a three strips, you'll need a six and a half on the back. So, pattern tells you that. Now, if you don't own a strip tube ruler, uh, first I'll say, if you're a member of the Nimble Pimble School Club, we have one that Catherine Smith gave us. So, you can borrow that, it's in the cabinet. Uh, we have other members who own them. Uh, I'm sure you can borrow one. So, uh, I yet can get one for you at half price, um, but if you don't have a strip tube ruler and you don't want to buy one, you can use any square that has a diagonal line, and they all do. Because it's the same concept. You're going to find how big you need, you're going to put a piece of tape across there, you're going to lay that square on there. So, tools are great, but as you know, you can find your own way. Okay, so then you can go on YouTube, and I put it on here. It's called uh, Two Quilting with Jelly Rolls. It's the YouTube. And she doesn't have the strip tube. She shows you how to do it. So you can even follow her along. This is the copy of the book if you want to buy it. Um, there's the copy of the ruler. If you want to refer to that later. Uh, this is where I might be infringing on copyright rules, but um, this is a reminder of everything I just showed you. And then lastly, this is the cool thing. Those are all the different quilts. So Jan, would you pass those up? Those are all the different quilts that have together. Yes. Yeah. Uh, she's going to give these to... Uh, I understand. She's going to give these to all the um, women who don't belong to the quilt club first, and then um, those of you who do, if I don't have enough, why I'll bring to the next one. Then, um, my business card is on there. Um, for those of you who don't know me, I have a long arm quilting business. I'm not a custom uh, quilter, I don't have those talents yet, but I do overall quilting. And um, I put a 20% off your first strip tube quilt that you bring me to quilt. And that goes for all of you. Because you have nothing, it's not a marketer. <laughs> so, then the last thing, and then I'll, I'll ask you a question. Um, we're going to have a work day at Scott Hall. You do not have to be a nephew. The extension office. I'm sorry, the extension office, not Scott Hall. We're at Scott Hall. The extension office at the end of the, the road here. Um, you do not have to be a Nimble Pebbles member to participate in this. I'm going to teach this hands on with having Sharon, Sharon's active quilter. You bring your fabric and cut it. Um, and you can help us sew if you want because we are making, finishing this quilt to donate to a child at a habitat home. Um, the date is October the 22nd at 9 a.m. at uh, Scott Hall. Nibble, nibble, nibble. I quilt just like I told. If, if, if Becky doesn't show up, we know where she will be. Yeah, yeah. That's, that's yeah. the wrong I'll place. Be Hall. Be here. So if you would like to come, uh, including Nibble Bimble members, anybody who would like to come, uh, sign up with your email and I'll send you a reminder. Uh, and, and if you want to come and bring your own fabric to make your own quilt, 
do that too. We'll have to get it cut. We'll have to get it started. Question. When is it? Friday. Uh, uh, two, what day is it? Tuesday. Tuesday. It's a Tuesday. Nine to one. Nine to one. Pardon me? Yeah, we'll actually have two projects going on that day. We have a committee who's putting a quilt together. The blocks are already made. So uh, no, there's always work. Sometimes we just have women who hire them. <laughs> you know? So there's always work. And it's a good time to meet the members of the book club. See if you think it's a fit for you. And you can bring your sewing machine, or you don't have to bring your sewing machine. Because we'll demonstrate that if you want to bring your sewing machine, we can accommodate the sewing machine. So, Susan, when do you start? Uh, I start when I make my tea. I start this. Oh. So it's, it's kind of crisp. You don't start the whole I don't. I just want I want that seam wide open so that I'm getting my full width here. Um, <laughs> you have a question, Captain? No. Oh, what did you say? The name. The name of the twenty second of September. That's why I'm making a whole other quilt over there because. This one's seven and a half inch, and this one's four and a half inch. I'm not kidding. You should see what I'm doing with them. It's really cool. Becky, did you say that you pressed that center seam open or to no, one side? No, I'm sorry. I pressed it to the side. Okay. And I don't, I'm not one to worry about light and dark. I, those details don't work with me. Just press it over because you want it to be the same width as your coordinating fabric when you put it together. Make sense? And if it's not, you know, if it's not exact, if you look here, you know, you can see a little blue picking out. That's, that's not going to hurt anything. <laughs> so for fun, not for perfection. That's my theory. <laughs> What's he going to do with that case? <laughs> okay, what else? Anybody else? <laughs> okay. All right, it's a fun way to turn a quilt around. We ha I have two friends here. We were setting a quilt club a few months ago. One of them maybe won some fabric that time when we had that drawing fabric. And I said, oh, that'd be a, a good a good bunch of fabric for a turning 20. And they said, what's turning 20? And I said, oh, it's just a quilt you can make in a day. And they laughed. And they said, can't make a quilt in a day. I said, I can make a quilt in a day with your help. So they challenged me. And our quilt in a day, Susie and Teresa, raise your hand. They'll show you our quilt in a day. It's hanging over there. Now, I'm very impatient, I'm very demanding, I'm not even a nice person, so about 3 about three thirty, when I'm thinking I'm going to get a glass of wine and call this a day, and they're still looking, well, do you think this one looks better with these two touching? I'm like, just put the thing together and so this is a call of the day, we're not designing here. So, I had to go back and apologize later, but we ain't got to be a quilt this girl. Okay, so this is another one you're doing today. Thank you.